Hello, welcome back to the Groove Agent 5 tutorial series. We're having a look at MIDI patterns today. And in the previous episode, we had a general introduction to the pattern editor itself, but it was very much in isolation. Once you've got notes in there, what can you do with them? Well, let's have a look at how it integrates with Groove Agent generally, and then the bigger layer of the onion into Cubase. So there's any number of ways we can get MIDI patterns into the pattern editor, but the, the easiest front door is through the agent page itself. We have two pages over here, style and MIDI, and at the moment we just want to focus on the MIDI side of things. We can load any MIDI pattern into the pattern editor by dropping it onto this little drop, drop MIDI pattern here to import it to the user library. So this is gonna create a copy of it in our user library. If we don't want to do that, we can drop it straight onto a pad. And that's more of a temporary kind of situation. It's not been stored anywhere. It's literally just in the pad. So let's do those two different options. Option number one is pick up the groove, drop it onto a pad. We've now got the burning motions groove one MIDI loop on our pad. Let's hear it. You can see it's a 16 beat pattern. That line is telling us, you know, the current play location of the pattern. And we can change those start and end values by either clicking in the text box and dragging up and down, cursoring, double click and type a number. If we pick up this gray bar and drag it, we keep the size, but we move the location. Set it back to the start. Similarly, editing the end is nice and easy. So that is similar functionality to picking up the start and end markers over here. See it's on beat one, that's on beat one. Go to the pattern editor, move it to the beginning of uh, bar two, which is beat five. If, if beat number one is the very beginning of the pattern, this is gonna be beat number five. There we've got beat number five. So those two things are constantly in sync with each other. And if I right click trim pattern to start end, it's going to throw those first two beats away and we will end up with a 14 beat pattern. There's the visual ev evidence in the pattern editor and there's the confirmation in the agent page. I can control Z to undo that and we're back to a 16 beat pattern. So all of this is just on the pad. We've copied this loop onto the pad and it's now all editable, but it's not permanently stored anywhere. If I say, if I select save MIDI pattern, you can see that burning motions groove one isn't a member of my user library. And you can see that I basically never used the user library. If I drag that groove over onto the little import button, now, Burning Motions is part of my library. So if I filter for just user content, then I'm gonna be able to find the loops that I've previously saved. And then obviously I can save that as anything. And now I've just stored my new preset, Burning Motions, New Groove. Let's have a look at gate scale, see what it does. I've selected a nice easy pattern with not many notes in it. And we're gonna focus on the kick and snare. First thing I'm gonna do is make them both no loop. So instead of being one shot, play everything you've got, we're now gonna be controlling the sound of these um, notes with their length. See immediately it sounds different. Now if I start reducing the gate scale, those notes are gonna get proportionately shorter. Any one shot sound is gonna be completely unaffected. Now this is a proportional effect, so it depends on how long the note was to start with. So in the pattern view, I've engaged show note length so we can see it. Now if I make the kick physically longer, it's going to change the sound. It 
same with the snare. That's quite a short sound anyway, but they do sound different. And past 100%. The notes will be played longer than they should be. So that's a really useful way of using gate scale, but just bear in mind that it doesn't work on uh, one shot hits, which is why all this stuff down here has been completely unaffected. A velocity scale does exactly that. It raises or lowers the velocity of every corresponding note in the pattern. So if you've got differences between loud notes and soft notes, they'll be accentuated if you go past 100% and everything gets softened for values below 100%. So at nothing, the entire beat is now almost inaudible. As we come back in, change one of the volumes of the snares. All of the volumes of all of the beats um, are either suppressed or accentuated on a relative basis with 100% being the offset. So at 100% it's going to play its natural velocity level. Tempo scale is really self-explanatory. Literally doubles or halves the BPM of the, of the beat. And all of this stuff, whatever we have these settings set to, when we finally come to export this sound into Cubase, they're all going to be baked in. So if I export um, a normal pattern, and we do it with this little button, drag MIDI pattern to host sequencer, pick that up, drag it out, now set it to double, pick it up, drag it out. If we have a look at those two patterns in the editor, you can see that the first pattern is playing twice as fast as the second pattern. So whatever values have been applied to the MIDI pattern, then when we drag it to the host um, sequencer, all of those are gonna get set in stone. So let's apply some swing to the pattern. At normal speed. Yep. Not much change, but it's there. If I drag that out and we compare those two side by side, so there's our original pattern, there's our new pattern. The notes have been shifted to account for the swing. You can see these D2s have been moved to account for that swing offset. Quantize is also self-explanatory. If I set it to quarter notes and well we'll start off at zero so that's the regular beat now introduce the quantize it throws a lot of that stuff away and we're heading all the way towards quarter beats one two three four it's quarter beat if we're using uh, cubase to fire entire patterns then it can be useful to be able to mute them from here at the um, at the pad level. And you can actually disable the entire pad with the pad on off button up here, and that disables everything about it. Now, if you're going to be using Cubase to trigger patterns um, as entire entities, you've got uh, quite a few options available to you with this. This cog symbol up here says show pad settings. If we turn that on, we get a new set of options available to us. Now, every one of these options is assignable per pad. So if I untick exclusive, this pad is no longer in exclusive mode. Can you see the others have an EX on them, which says they are. Exclusive mode means if you're playing a pad, any other pad gets shut down. So if I, let's disable exclusive for these two pads. I want to get to the stage where I can play both of these pads simultaneously and start messing around with them 
um, with their beats interacting. And because I've currently got play mode set to, play mode set to hold, it means it only operates when I actually activate the pad. So I'm going to set that to toggle. For the purposes of this demonstration, it's going to be much easier for you to see what's going on. But all of this applies to you can press these things on the keyboard and hold them both down and it will work absolutely fine. But if I click this pad now, it's going to start running and just kind of carry on in the background. Let's head over here and set toggle mode for um, A minus one as well. And set it going. Now, did you see when I engage the pad, the current play marker jumped to where this pad was? Do it again. I'll wait for this one to get to beat four. And they sync up. That's what sync, sync to beat does. I turn sync to beat off. This pad will play from the beginning, regardless of where the other pad is. So to demonstrate uh, velocity mode for you, what I've basically done is I've set these two pads, D sharp zero and A minus one, both synced to the next beat. And at the moment we've both got velocity mode original. And I've also configured it so that I can play these from my keyboard. So I hit D sharp zero on my MIDI track, outputting to groove agent pattern. A minus one is down here. So it doesn't matter how loud I play the key, it plays that pattern exactly as is, as is baked into the pattern itself. If I switch velocity mode to as played on both of these pads. Now I'm going to play D sharp zero really quietly and A minus one uh, louder. And it's tracking how hard I've hit the key. So you can actually introduce some kind of performance element to the playing of the pads with velocity mode as played. And the original plus as played just basically gives you a sum of those two things. It'll use part of the information from the pad to determine how loud to play the notes, but also allow you to influence it from your keys. Everything that we've done uh, today has been on a MIDI loop loaded from the load MIDI pattern page. So this is stuff that Groove Agent already understands. These are Groove Agent MIDI patterns. But obviously you can go to your browser, pick any old MIDI pattern up, drag it over onto a pad. And from that point onwards, you've got all of the same functionality that you did with your baked in Groove Agent MIDI loops. So that's MIDI patterns dealt with. Um, in the next episode, we'll head over to styles, have a look at all of the functionality in the style player with an understanding that styles can also be converted into MIDI patterns. So even though styles are a super set of MIDI patterns and give you a lot of functionality that MIDI patterns themselves don't contain, you can always bake them down to the, um, the simpler underlying MIDI patterns if you need to do so. We'll deal with all of that in the next video. Um, if you hit, hit subscribe and notifications, then you'll be sure not to miss it. Hope to see you then. Thanks a lot.